Good morning, and welcome to Christ Baptist Church Sunday morning worship service. We thank you for tuning in, and like our pastor, Lawrence E. Robertson, always says, you can't find a better church on this side of glory than Christ Baptist Church. So you are in the right place at the right time. So we ask you to join us this morning as we worship the Lord and in spirit and in truth. God bless you and have an awesome week.
God for Jesus. I thank God that he gave his only begotten son to die on an old rugged cross. Thank God for Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. Oh, I'm grateful to God for our choir. They, has, they have lifted up the name of the Lord in song. Our deacons, that's all right to give our choir a hand praise. Our servant leaders, our deacons have already devoted this service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now it is prayer time. And if you're able to stand, let us rest to our feet for the Lord's Prayer. History Month. Our theme is Black Health and Wellness. With that, we especially encourage you to continue to follow our safety guidelines. Please continue to wear your mask. Please refrain from embracing and handshaking. Please maintain social distance. We want to keep everyone safe. We have a thank you from the family of William Bolden. Thank you for your kind expression and sympathy of love you have shown and given us during this time of comfort. It is with great appreciation that we will always remember the Bolden family. 
Sunday school continues to be held on Sunday mornings by telephone conference calls. There are three classes each Sunday, starting at 8 a.m., 8.30 a.m., and 11.30 a.m. New members on Tuesday at 5 p.m. And teenagers and young adults, 11 a.m. on Saturday. Facebook Live. Please call the church for the phone number to join in. Social media. You don't have to be a member of Christ Baptist to join our Sunday school. You are invited. Please contact the church at 219-938-5504 for information. Likewise, social media and Christ Baptist family join us for Bible study, which is virtually on Wednesday at noon. Call the office at 219-938-5504, and the telephone number will be, provide, will, will be provided for you to join in. Amen. Our pastor will certainly welcome you. We now have announcement. I think Candace Rayburn. CWR, which is Northwest Indiana Christian Women's Retreat. And ladies, we are having our 33rd annual retreat this year. I just want to let you know it's a little bit different. It was different last year as well, but we're doing what I call a hybrid model where we're going to have activities. We've had an activity in January, but we're going to have additional activities this year once a month. So the theme of our retreat this year is Planted, Not Buried, and it's based on Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3, and Psalms 1, 1 through 3. And we have activities. We had an excellent game day in January, and we have an activity coming up in February. We have our book chat. We are reading. Uh, the title is... As Long As I Clean by Kim Cash Tate. We will be discussing that on February 19th. On February 26th, we're going to have an in-person live recording, so we're inviting all to come out to that. That's going to be on February 26th. We're going to hear from Dr. Donna Denny. And then in March, we're going to have our virtual workshops. That will be online. And we're going to have presenters Angela Grayson and Reverend Latoya Ellis. And then we're going to come back on that Sunday and have a luncheon, which would be March 20th. And then in April, to wrap it all off, we're going to have a heart-to-heart -heart virtual session where it's going to be like a fishbowl. You can come with any question that you have that we can talk as women. So I'm going to encourage you to visit our website because I know I said a lot, a mouthful, and it was a lot to take in. Visit nicwr.org slash retreat, nicwr.org slash retreat. To get all this information, we want to encourage you to come out, ladies. And if you have any questions, you can ask me and any of our NICWR members. So if there are members that are here, would you just please stand so you know who you can ask questions. So ladies, and this is for Christ Baptist ladies, this is for ladies that are in the Northwest Indiana region. And now that we are virtual, if you're anywhere, you can visit our website, log in or register. Get the Zoom link and join us from wherever you are. And again, that website is nicwr.org slash retreat. Thank you. Amen. These were your morning announcements. We celebrate Black History Month by emphasizing the importance of black health and wellness. The theme acknowledged the legacy of not only black scholars and medical practitioners in Western medicine, midwives, naturopaths, herbalists. The theme 
consider, considers activities, rituals, and initiatives that black communities have done to keep, to keep us well. Remember, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. My brothers, you know what to do. <laughs> and remember, let's continue to obey God and leave the consequences to him. Thank you.
truly comes from, but all of my help comes from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise for the choir. Amen. They have lifted up the name of our Lord and Savior in song, and they have certainly brought us to the place where we're ready to hear the word of God. It's time to open the book to the word of God's grace. This past week in prayer and meditation, the Lord led me to Ephesians chapter 6. Very familiar passage of scripture. Ephesians chapter 6. Paul's letter to the Ephesian church. We will read verses 18 through 20. I encourage you to read the entire chapter of Ephesians 6 in your quiet time but we will focus on verses 18 through 20. Ephesians chapter six, when you have it, say amen. amen. And if you're able to stand, let us rest to our feet for the reading of God's word. Ephesians six, commencing at verse 18. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the presence of almighty God. The apostle Paul gives instructions here. He says to pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. Pray for everybody and pray for everything they need. And then Paul says, also pray for me that I may continue to preach God's word. This morning, I want to preach and teach from the subject title, Prayer Warriors Fight on Their Knees. Prayer warriors fight on their knees. Amen. I grew up and I was born and raised in Gary, Indiana. And one thing you had to learn how to do was fight. Amen. And I learned how to fight running backwards. I learned how to stand up and fight. But when I got into the ministry and I learned, the Lord taught me that sometimes the biggest fights are on our knees. Prayer warriors pray on their knees. Won't you bow in a moment of prayer? Father, I thank you for this opportunity to serve you. I'm humbled by this awesome responsibility. And now, Lord, I pray that you use me as you will and allow your word to go forth with boldness and understanding where your name is magnified and glorified. Your people are edified and your kingdom is advanced. This is my prayer. I'm your servant, and you're my God, and I pray in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Prayer warriors fight on their knees. This is a very familiar passage of scripture, the epistle to the Ephesian church, Ephesians chapter 6. It's here where the apostle Paul gives instructions throughout this letter. Paul gives instructions in verse 1 telling children to obey your parents, to honor your father and to honor your mother so that it may go well with you and you may enjoy a long life. Yes. Then Paul instructs the parents in verse four when he says fathers, which means parents, do not exasperate your children. Yes. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. In other words, raise your children in the knowledge of Almighty God. Paul gives instructions throughout this letter. He gives instructions to the slaves when he tells them 
Slaves, servants, obey your masters. And then Paul says to the masters, don't mistreat your slaves. And after all of this instruction, then Paul turns to the believer. Paul gives directions to the believer in verses 10 through 20. Paul tells the Ephesians and he tells us that after we put on all the equipment of a strong Christian, Paul says, after we put on all this armor, the full armor of God, after putting on your fighting clothes, Paul tells us in verse 18 that a good soldier is a prayer warrior. A good soldier is God's prayer warriors, and prayer warriors fight on their knees. Verse 10 says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And then in verse 18, it tells us that that power is found when we fall on our knees in prayer. There's power in prayer. There's power in prayer because prayer is a spiritual weapon. Oftentimes when this passage is taught, many stop at verse 17. And we read verses 14 through 17. We, We read that to stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. We read those verses. Verse 16, we read, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Many times we stop right there. Many believe that after you get dressed up in the armor of God, then you're ready to go. But verse 18 begins with the word and. That means getting dressed up is not enough. That tells me that looking good and looking ready to fight is not enough. You need some training. You may be dressed up. You may look good. You smell good. You got on your church clothes. But are you ready? Are you ready to fight? Being dressed up is not enough. Paul says after you put on the full armor of God, do you pray? Do you pray for all in the church? After you put on your armor, do you pray? Do you pray for more than those folks that you know? Do you pray? Do you have a prayer list? Do you do you have a prayer list where you render intentional prayers? Oh, intentional prayers. A prayer list that includes people outside your circle of associates. Do you pray intentional prayers? That means do you pray for them by name? Do you pray for them by their need? Do you pray for what they're going through? Intentional prayers. Pray for the sick and shut in. Pray for the unemployed. Pray for families. Pray for households. Pray for churches. Pray for the lost. Pray for those who have gone astray. Pray for those who are behind bars. Intentional prayers. Because there's power in prayer. Prayer is a weapon. Prayer is a powerful weapon. The Apostle Paul is chained to a Roman soldier here when he writes this letter to the Ephesian church. Paul is under house arrest, and he sees how this Roman soldier is dressed for battle. He sees how this Roman soldier has on all that he needs to fight. And Paul takes this Roman soldier's apparel And he applies it metaphorically to the believer. In verses 14 through 17, Paul tells us that we should be dressed for battle. We should be clothed in our fighting clothes, ready for warfare. We need to have on the belt of truth. We need the breastplate of righteousness across our chest. We need our feet fitted with the right boots, with the right shoes, the readiness to spread the gospel. We need to have and lift up the shield of faith when the devil throws his fiery darts at us. We need to be dressed properly. We need the helmet of salvation. We need to be dressed for battle. We need the sword of the spirit. 
which is the word of God. When you get in trouble, you need to have a word down on the inside. So glad that my grandmother taught us the 23rd Psalm when we were little children. If you ever got in trouble, you could just start quoting scripture. Just have a word on the inside. Our children need to have a word today. That's the Christian uniform to get dressed properly for battle. But what do you do when you get all dressed up? After you get all dressed up, you all arm it up. What do you do? All dressed up with nowhere to go. Paul tells us what to do in verse 18. He says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. The Apostle Paul makes it very clear that every Christian should be dressed like a spiritual soldier. Every Christian should have on armor like a spiritual warrior. And then Paul tells us that every Christian should pray like a warrior. That means every Christian is a prayer warrior. It's quiet in here. Every Christian should be a prayer warrior. As we celebrate Black History Month and continue to celebrate Black History Month, I like to look back at those films and tapes of the Civil Rights Movement. I have many of those tapes on my desk. I have them at home. I have the full volume series of Eyes on the Prize. And I would encourage you to order that volume set and, and show that to your children and grandchildren because that is our history. And they're trying to take that history out of the schools. And so you need to teach that at home. That's our history. And I encourage you to get the eyes on the prize set. Every now and then, I like to look at those, those tapes uh, from the Civil Rights Movement. And there's one tape I've been looking at this past few weeks titled Freedom Summer, where during the summers of 1963 and 1964, when students were out of school, these young people would demonstrate they would protest for civil rights. And when you watch those tapes, you will see that these young people are well dressed. When you look at those tapes, these young people are dressed up in, in, in shirts and ties and suits and jackets and dresses and their church shoes. They look like they just come from church. You know why? That's where they came from because they were coming from church. They were coming from church because ministers and leaders back then of the movement, Dr. King and Reverend Abernathy and Reverend Shuttlesworth, they would have prayer meetings at their churches. The young people would dress up and come to church. They would get their assignments, and then they would go out into battle. They would go out and battle segregation. They would go out and protest racism. They got dressed up. They went to church, and they got prayed up. Then they went out to the fight. In fact, there's one iconic picture that I really paid close attention to. There was a young man in Birmingham, Alabama in the summer of 1963. He went out to protest in downtown Birmingham, and the Birmingham Police Department attacked him with German shepherds. They put the dogs on this young man. And when I studied that picture of this young man being attacked by dogs, when I studied that picture with my spiritual eye, I noticed that this young man had on dungarees. If you don't know what dungarees are, they're pants that are made from a heavy denim. Dungarees are those thick, heavy blue jeans that you work in. He also had on a long sleeve shirt that was buttoned to the top. And he had on a sweater, a long sleeve sweater. Remember now, it's Freedom Summer. And if you know anything about the weather in Alabama, Mississippi in August, you don't wear dungarees and sweaters and long sleeve shirts. So this young man was dressed for battle. All these young people would dress up, they would go to church, get prayed up, and they would go out into the battle. There's another picture that got my attention when Dr. King led a march over the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And when he got to the apex of the bridge and looked ahead and saw the opposing forces on the other side of the bridge, Dr. King and Reverend Abbott had to knelt down on that bridge in prayer. Prayer warriors fight on their knees. 
You know, the churches were staging locations where all would gather together in prayer meetings. They would pray together, and then they would go out. That's why the churches were bombed. There were places where people met. They prayed. Then they went and protested. That's why churches were bombed, most notably the 16th Street Baptist Church of Birmingham, Alabama, where four little girls lost their lives. But we know God would take care of that. Amen? Amen. God will take care of that. And we know that prayer warriors fight on their knees. And just about every Baptist church has a group or a committee or an auxiliary of people who are known as prayer warriors. Just about every church has a group of people who we call prayer warriors. And it's all right to have prayer warriors in the church. It's good to be able to call someone to pray for you and to pray for your family. But I stopped by to tell you this morning that prayer warriors are not just an exclusive group of people in the church. Every Christian should be a prayer warrior. Every believer, every Christian should spend some time on their knees in prayer. If you are a soldier in the army of the Lord, if you are on the battlefield for the Lord, you should be a prayer warrior. Verse 18 again, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Paul gives us three things in this one verse. In verse 18, first, Paul says, pray in the spirit. And second, Paul tells us to pray on all occasions. And third, Paul says to pray all kinds of prayers and requests. First of all, pray in the spirit. That means your prayers are not merely your thoughts. Praying in the spirit means your prayers are not your opinions. They're not your desires. Praying in the spirit means your prayer is done in submission to the almighty God. Praying in the spirit is turning it over to God. When you pray in the spirit, you're not informing God of anything because God knows all things. When you pray in the spirit, you're inviting God into that situation. You're inviting God to meet someone at their point of need. Praying in the spirit means you recognize who you're praying to. You recognize that God is an almighty, all-knowing, omniscient, everywhere at the same time God. And so Paul says, first pray in the spirit. That's how we worship God, in spirit and in truth. And you ought to pray in the spirit. Praying, praying in the spirit is submitting to the will of God. Lord, your will be done. Not my will, let thy will be done. Second thing Paul tells us is to pray on all occasions. That means pray at all times and in all situations. That means pray when you're happy. Pray when you're sad. Pray when you're up. Pray when you're down. Pray when you're almost level to the ground. Pray when you feel good. Pray when you don't feel good. Pray on all occasions. That means pray in the morning. Pray at noonday. Pray in the evening. Pray when the sun goes down. Pray on all occasions. That means pray when you get up in the morning. Pray when you go out. Pray when you come in. Pray when you go down to bed at night. Pray when you have plenty and pray when you're in need. Pray on all occasions. Oh, you ought to pray when a child is born. You ought to pray when they learn how to walk. Pray when they learn how to talk. Pray when they go to school for the first time. Pray when they graduate. Pray on all occasions. That means pray at weddings. Pray at home goings. Pray on holidays. Pray every day on all occasions. The Bible says Abraham prayed early in the morning. The Bible says Elijah prayed at noonday. Joshua prayed when the sun went down. Paul and Silas prayed even at midnight. Pray on all occasions and at all times. Moses prayed up on the mountain. Ezekiel prayed down in a valley. David prayed standing in front of a giant. Jonah prayed in the belly of a fish. John the Baptist prayed way out in the wilderness. Pray on all occasions and at all times. Then Paul says, pray all kinds of prayers, all kinds of requests. 
Prayer warriors pray for every deed. Prayer warriors pray for every situation with all kinds of prayer. Pray for someone's health. Pray for someone's strength. Pray for someone's peace. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your comfort. I'm praying for your healing. I'm praying for your recovery. I'm praying for your deliverance. I'm praying for your safety. I'm praying for your traveling mercy, for your protection. I'm praying for your children and your grandchildren. I'm praying that God will lift up your bow down head. I'm praying that God will restore your soul, will renew your faith, and regenerate your joy. Pray all kinds of prayers. That means pray for your family. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your friends. Pray for your enemies. Pray for your city. Pray for your state, your nation, and your world. Pray for your leaders. Pray for those in authority. Pray for your church. Pray for another church. Pray for every church that's open in the name of the Lord. Pray for somebody that doesn't know Jesus. You ought to pray for sinners. Pray for mean folks. Pray for nice folks. Pray for kindness. Pray for humility. Pray for forgiveness. Pray for somebody's hope. Somebody needs courage. Pray that someone gains wisdom. Pray for understanding. Oh, you ought to pray for everything. All kinds of requests. Paul says, pray all kinds of prayers. Pray for the poor. Pray for the suffering. Pray for those in prison. Pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. Because tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Pray for your parents. Pray for your brothers and your sisters. Pray for your aunts and your uncles. Pray for your nephews and your nieces. Pray for your first cousin, your second cousin, your third cousin. Pray for all of them. Pray for your co-workers. Pray all kinds of prayers. Pray for the doctor. Pray for the nurse. Pray for the teacher. Pray for the principal. Pray for the police officers. Pray for the firefighters. Pray all kinds of prayers. I'm almost finished. The Super Bowl doesn't start till 5.30, but I know you want to see the pregame and all the preliminary. <laughs> Paul says, pray all kinds of prayers. And then Paul says, pray for me. He says, after you pray in the spirit, after you pray all, on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, the apostle Paul says in verse 19, pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Pray that the Lord strengthens me to keep on preaching his word. That touched me personally when Paul says, pray for me. I thank God for that phrase, for that verse. Pray for me that I can tell somebody about Jesus. Pray for me that I can tell somebody about the good news of the gospel. Pray for me that I may tell somebody that the Lord is good and he's good all the time. Pray for me because I want to keep telling people that the Lord is full of compassion. The Lord is full of mercy. The Lord is full of grace. Pray for me so that I can tell somebody that whatever you're going through, God is all you need. Pray for me because I heard the Apostle Paul say I had a thorn in my flesh and I prayed about it. And God said my grace is sufficient. My strength is perfected in your weakness. Pray for me that I can tell somebody about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Pray for me that I can tell somebody that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Pray for me so I can tell somebody that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Oh, won't you pray for me so that I can tell somebody to lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory may come in. Pray for me so that I can tell somebody who this king of glory is, it's the Lord strong and mighty. It's the Lord mighty in battle. Pray for me so I can tell somebody 
all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Oh, won't you pray for me that I can speak God's word. Pray for me so that I can preach God's word. Pray for me so that I can tell somebody, have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. I want to tell somebody that his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But I want to tell somebody today that those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Pray for me so I can tell somebody that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to tell somebody that he died for your sins, he died for my sins, that he died for the sins of the world. I want to tell somebody the gospel story, the gospel story, the story of the good news, that he came down through 42 generations, got dropped off one cold December night in Bethlehem of Judea, that he was born in a stable, laid in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. I want to tell somebody that he grew up and went about doing good, had to tell his mom and daddy that I must be about my father's business. I want to tell somebody that one Friday evening he went to Calvary's Hill with an old rugged cross on his back and a thorny crown on his head. I want to tell somebody that they nailed his hands, they nailed his feet, they hung him high, they stretched him wide. I want to tell somebody that he hung his head and then he died. I said he died. Didn't he die? I want to tell somebody that they put him down in a borrowed tomb. Stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night. I want to tell somebody, you ought to pray for me so I can tell somebody that early Sunday morning, I said early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, he got up. Stepped out on resurrection ground, raised his hand. All power is in my hand. I got all power. All power is in my hands. Grace power, mercy power, forgiveness power, healing power, deliverance power, forgiveness power, salvation power, all power. Prayer warriors fight on their knees. Oh, if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, you ought to be a prayer warrior. I thank God for his word on the strength and power of God's word. On the strength of the preached word, I offer the invitation to discipleship. The doors to my father's house are open. Now is the time and this is the place to give your life to Jesus. Won't you come? The doors to my father's house are open. The invitation is yours. Won't you come? Man, woman, boy, or girl, unchurched, unsaved, uncommitted, now is the time. Won't you come? The doors to my father's house are open. You may come as a candidate for baptism. You may come on Christian experience, reaffirmation of faith. You may come in search of a church home. We will welcome you with open arms. Won't you come? We offer Christ to you today. The doors to my father's house are open. The choir is 
singing. Ministers are in the aisles to greet you as you come. The deacons are waiting for you. Won't you come? Man, woman, boy, or girl. same invitation to you. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father in heaven, you shall be saved. Make that confession today. And my prayer is once you make that confession, the Lord put a covering on you and order your steps from this day forward. Make that confession. And once you make that confession, make sure you get into a good Bible reading, Bible teaching church. We would love to have you here at Christ Baptist Church, 4700 East 7th Avenue, Gary, Indiana. But if you can't make it here, make sure you get under the tutelage of a good Bible teaching church. God bless you and God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. The doors to my father's house are open. not too late. The doors to my father's house are always open. As our ministers and deacons readjust, this is a time we set aside for meditation and reflection. Our music director and musicians play for us music of meditation, where we allow the word of God to fill the sanctuary and penetrate hearts. It's meditation time where we can thank God and meditate on his goodness, all the blessings that he bestowed upon us since we were together last. It's meditation time.
Amen. I thank God for our music ministry. Amen. I thank God for our music director, Chris Sims, and our percussionist, Marcus Carter. It's all right to give God a hand praise for them. God has given them a gift and a talent, and they're using it in the service of the Lord. Amen. It's, it's prayer time. It's time to go to God in prayer to make our requests known so that the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's prayer time, and Brother Nimrod is coming now to give us the spoken prayer request of the week. Thank you, Pastor. Bless you. Today, as I stand before my church family, after listen, listening to a pastor deliver that wonderful sermon this morning on prayer, I would be remiss if I didn't thank each and every one for the calls and cards concerning my wife's illness. I realize that it is through the grace of God and prayer that my wife is making a remarkably recovery. Amen. Is she still facing some challenges? Yes. But at this point, we are so grateful that it's nothing life-threatening so continue to pray for my wife, Marie. Thank you so much. Amen. Specifically, continue to pray for the bereaved families. Of Deacon Martin, who lost his brother-in-law, arrangements are, are this coming Thursday at Smith and Brazil Funeral Home at 11 o'clock. Let's continue to continue to pray for him. Let's continue to pray for the family of our own Ant Antonio Jones and the loss of his lovely mother. Let's continue to pray for Brenda and Robert Matheny and the loss of their loved ones. And specifically, continue to pray. I just heard that Pastor Jackie Drago passed away. She's a pastor of Church of First God, as well as Pastor Laverne Swain, who's pastor of Cornelia Baptist Church. Let's keep them in our prayers. Thank you so much. Pastor, those are our prayer requests. Thank you. Amen. Church, you've heard the spoken prayer request. Sometimes we have to receive news that just hurts our heart, amen? But prayer changes things. And it's good to know that we can take everything to the Lord in prayer. It's prayer time. And I want us to lift up those families that are in bereavement. I want us to lift up every member of this church, every household that's represented here today. I want us to lift up every church that's open in the name of the Lord. It's prayer time and Deacon Claiborne Guiner is coming now to render the altar prayer. It's prayer time. Make sure you pray for the one in front of you, the one behind you, the one on either side. That way everyone in the house is prayed for. It's prayer time. Let us bow for prayer. Oh, gracious God in heaven, Father, we come to you this morning with sincere heart. We humble ourselves before you, asking dear God to hear our prayers. First of all, Lord, I want to ask you to forgive me for my sins, those of omission, those of commission, even those, oh Lord, by the train of my thought. 
because my thoughts are not always God-fearing thoughts. But Lord, I just pray that you forgive me for you died on an old rugged cross just for sinners like myself. Father, we thank you that you cleaned us, picked us up out of the muck and out of the marrow. Turn our lives around, O oh Lord. We thank you that when we heard your call, we hardened not our heart, but we was receptacle to your word. Father, you heard the prayer request. You know every name on it. You know every situation. So right now, Lord, we just ask that you touch. Touch our sake, Lord, and our afflicted. Touch those who are going through things, seen and unseen. Those who have requests that are unspoken. Father, you know all about those situations. Father, you have the answer. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Father, you have medicine in you. You even have medicine for a sin sick soul. Father, you are our creator, our maker, and our sustainer. So right now, Lord, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. Pray for our homes, our loved ones, and our unsaved loved ones. Father, we pray that you would touch them while the blood yet run warm in their veins. Father, don't let it be said too late. Right now, Lord, I lift up our Christ Baptist Church family, each and every member, our pastor, his family. Continue to undergird and strengthen him, O oh Lord. We lift up churches everywhere that are open in your holy name. Father, we pray for our young people, our school-age children. Pray, O oh Lord, that they don't become victims or gun violence under peer pressure. Go with them, keep them, stand by them, guide and direct their path because our children are our future. So Father, right now, Lord, touch, O oh God, like only you can. Father, we just say thank you. We ask you, Lord, to look in the prison wall Somebody's incarcerated unjustly, and there are some who are guilty. But Lord, you are a forgiving God. So we ask that you touch them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we will be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and all of the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. that wonderful prayer. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. Let's take a few moments now to prepare our offertory envelopes. Uh, those will be deposited in the offertory boxes located in the rear of the sanctuary upon dismissal. It's offering time. Our officers are taking place now, taking their positions. We thank God for you, the members of Christ Baptist Church, you who support your church, we're grateful to God for those who are watching by way of social media. All that you give and do for Christ Baptist Church, we really thank God for you. You will see appearing on your screen the variety of ways that you can donate to Christ Baptist Church. We thank God for all that you do for God's house of worship. We also want you to follow us. Hit the like button and share this service with someone because someone needs to hear the word of God. 
We thank God for you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's offering time. Reverend Mary Watkins is coming now to render the offertory prayer. Most gracious and holy Father, we come right now praising you. Father, we ask that you bless this offering, this giving in your name. Father, we ask that you bless those who are here in the sanctuary who are giving, Lord, and all of those who are in the media, Lord, yes. who will be sending theirs as well. Father, we ask that you bless each and every household and that this offering will be used for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. 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 Were you blessed by the service today? Amen. Glad you came out. Amen. Let's enjoy the rest of the day. Be safe. It's still very cold out. There's still some icy spots. Let's be very careful as we make our way back to our homes and residences. Enjoy the game this afternoon. Don't eat too much. And just stay safe and stay warm. Amen. With that, let us rest to our feet for our closing music and benediction. O oh, gracious and merciful Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all that our eyes have seen, all that our ears have heard, and all that our hearts have felt. We thank you for waking us up this morning giving us the strength to come out to your house of worship. We thank you for every song of praise. We thank you for the opportunity to render prayers unto thee. We thank you for being a prayer answering God. We thank you for the word today, and we especially thank you for Jesus. And now as we prepare to go out from this place, but not out of your presence, we pray, oh God, that you go ahead of us, you go before us, that you make a way for us. But most importantly, God, go with us. Now may the grace of God as Father and as Son and the sweet communion of God as Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each of these thy people now, henceforth, and forevermore, world without end. And all of God's people can say together, Amen. God bless you. Amen. See you next Sunday. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. Thank you.